What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Supper Suite at TIFF 2022. I have the team behind Fixation. I already kind of said this to you, but oh my God, the movie magic in this movie is something else. I just can't believe your production. Thank you. We love intensity. So, yes. yeah. <laughs> I, I have a lot of intensity about the movie, and the movie itself is quite intense. We'll get into some specifics, but Mercedes, I have to make you do this to start because a lot of our viewers out there will not know what Fixation is just yet. Can you give a brief synopsis of your movie? Yeah, so basically Fixation is about a young woman, um, Dora, who wakes up in this mental institution, and she doesn't know how she got there, and there's these odd doctors and experiments going on, and then she basically goes down the rabbit hole, and I'll just leave it at that to not give anything else away. You were prepared for that. Yeah. I'm yeah. Very I've been impressed. pitching it a long time. Okay. I'm very, very <laughs> impressed. So I have a lot of big burning questions, but one of the biggest of the bunch is, how did you select the song Always Forever? Because it got stuck in my head, and I, I went out and I bought it immediately after the movie was over. Yes, that is the best compliment because we wanted to like ingrain in the skulls of people and just play over and over and over again. Success. Yes. Yeah. Um, but the way that we found it is it's a song that I've always loved because it has this like very odd like hauntingness to it that's also emotional. And so before we started, we picked it out and we we're like, can we get the rights to this song to play literally 12 times in the movie? Um, so we brought it in and then Maddie and I, like when we first started out, we were like, this is how the dance goes with this song. And just became a part of it. Wait, how did you decide the specifics of the dance? Was it was it just kind of like free flowing in the moment or was there anything in particular you wanted to capture through it? Yeah, I mean, like um, we looked at like a lot of different types, but um, like Maddie, I'll let you talk to that, too, about like, because a lot of movements were things that you embodied and brought out. Um, we had a really lovely choreographer named Enzo. I always forget Enzo's last Romero. name. Romero. Enzo Romero. I'm the shittiest person alive. <laughs> um, and he choreographed this beautiful dance. He's incredibly talented. He was also our set photographer. He's like amazing. So a lot of it was him. But he was very collaborative and I have like a bit of a dance background. So that was fun for me because I got to be like, yeah, I'm 13 again. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I love that. I love to be a teenager still. Um, what was I going to say? I can't, I can't quite <laughs> help you with that. But I can give you an excuse that we have festival brain. We're buzzing and we're excited right now. I guarantee you I'll lose I'm my train of thought I'm also just like point. beaming <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> You I really my am. Heart explode live on camera, not live. <laughs> Recorded because remember we have an editor. I'm just happy, happy to see your face. <laughs> I'm always happy I to needed see your it face. this morning. I did. Success. I've always got you covered. Yeah, you All do. Right. I want to come back to you, Mercedes. Wait. Can you can you tell us a little bit about how some of your own experiences inspired what we see in this film? And I hate asking a director for like the intention and the like the meaning yes. behind the movie. Thank but you the, for it. Yeah. But really, like <laughs> yeah. the the impression you're hoping to make on viewers out there because it can help people reprocess some really difficult human truths that they might go through and they might not be able to do it unless they had a fictional story to experience it through. Yeah, definitely. So I developed the story with um, William Frank, the writer, and Katrina Kudlick, who's also a producer on it, a couple of years ago. And it kind of has a bit of each of us in it and some of our own stories. And like for me personally, Tehachapi, where Dora grew up, is where I grew up. And so it's this very small town um, with like very few people. And I feel like when you have very few people, it's easier to be manipulated because you don't have anyone to bounce things off of and so you don't know what's real or not. And it got to a point with me where I started to record my conversations because I was being told that what happened didn't. And so that was the only way I was able to like keep track of reality. And so that's for myself, but for other people, it's really sad, but I feel like every woman I know has had experiences similar to this. <laughs> um, but we also wanted like the male and female perspective. So that's why we came all together on this. We're like, what's all parts of this? I don't know if you could see it, but like the weight of what you were just explaining, like on my face, I'm like, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. To, to a degree, not yeah. maybe the same way, but yeah. I feel like everybody goes through something of the sorts at some point. Atticus. <laughs> uh, sorry. What, how how to phrase a question about your character? I'll go I'll go this route maybe, although this feels like it could tiptoe into spoilers as well. What would you say were some of your biggest burning questions initially after reading the script for Mercedes? Burning oh jeez, burning questions. Um I, th I feel like the only one we really I'm, I must have had for you was just kind of the how to properly go about 
exploring all of the different levels of this character. And every time we see him, he's kind of a new version and just keeps exponentially evolving and becoming like worse and worse and worse. And by worse, I also mean like, I don't, I, this is like, this becomes incredibly spoiler territory <laughs> yeah. if I keep talking yeah, about yeah. this. But yeah, the, the only question was just like how to properly balance that with uh, the, the, the rate of the story and where we needed him to be by kind of the climax, by the end of it. Um, and it was fun. I think we did like an all right job at it. I tried really <laughs> hard, but otherwise it was just kind of left between me and Maddie to kind of figure it out on the day and play with each other. It was okay. a lot of fun. A question for both of you now that I think could maybe tiptoe into spoilers. We'll try this to really let hard. it not do that. <laughs> I feel like it's a game. It's kind of like a puzzle. How am I going to figure this out? Um, given the evolution that your characters go through, did you have, and like what they learn about themselves, what they learn about what's happening around them, did you have like a guiding light of sorts where like no matter if a decision is made out of fear or not knowing or learning something new, there was some sort of like constant, a thing that kept them consistent from beginning to end? I mean, I mean. Do you? For, for me. <laughs> I feel like I see purely fear for me. on your face right <laughs> now. Me, because we talked about this last time at the QA, and, and when I gave Maddie a compliment at the Q&A, she gave me the finger, uh, like two <laughs> two fingers, and I. but I'm going to give another one. Like the constant for me was, you know, regardless of how seamlessly and how good the crew was and how great it was working with Mercedes, she's such an actor's director. Um, it was just doing the scenes with you. Like you were the constant, like every, no matter what I was doing, I always felt like if I veered off course, she was going to guide me right back. And I tried to do the same for her because she's the coolest. It's fucking great. <laughs> that's it. I agree I'm, with that. Thanks for not giving me the finger, but that's it. That's, that's, that's it. That's I'm it. fragile today. I'll cry, Atticus. <laughs> Don't. I love you. Stop it. <laughs> Put your love away. Yeah. Um. What was the question? A guiding light? Some sort of guiding light or anchor to have some sort of consistency for the character as she learned and grew throughout the course of the movie. Um, I think I drew on a lot of personal experiences and I don't, I don't really remember that much from shooting this because I, I like did this crazy weird thing that I have never done. And like, I lost 30 pounds and I wasn't eating and I ran like 10 miles a day. And I was just like in this wild, wild headspace. So I was just like, kind of, I was just kind of like going, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about how's this going to land or where does this fall in the script or whereas I was just, trusting Mercedes, I was trusting Atticus, I was trusting Genesis and just like, just trying to be present and also not pass out. I I could feel a lot of what you were describing in your profile. I, I seriously, like, how do you look at a script like this and say to yourself, like, I'm okay putting myself <laughs> through all of this? Because you literally do not get a moment in this movie to kind of sit back and relax. You have to be at an 11 from start to stop. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with me. And I am talking to my th my therapist, Leslie, about it. But I do like sadness <laughs> in Love a sense. hot way, you know, in like a fresh, flirty way. You know what I mean? I cut. No, I kind of think that that might be a good thing because not <laughs> if, if the Pixar You're movie. So if the, generous. If the Pixar movie Inside Out taught me anything, it's that sadness is a very valuable emotion that we yeah. need to we need to embrace and balance with all the other yeah. ones that we want. We think we want to have more. You know, it's also nice that I realized in my daily life, I don't really. I, I intellectualize my feelings. I don't like dive into them. And when I work, it feels like a really safe, contained environment to just be like really angry and really sad and really and have them all out there. And it doesn't feel as safe to me, like in my personal life to feel those not negative emotions, but emotions, emotions that just can feel like consuming. You know what I mean? 
very much get that. It's almost like this movie about reenactment therapy was its own version of reenactment therapy. <laughs> it was. I, I worked oh, some shit. stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> I worked some stuff out, baby. I feel tricked. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I need you to build like an escape room version of this so I can have some of that therapy in my life as well. We can do that for you. Okay. I'll sign up. Mercedes? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You already mentioned feeling safe, exploring, and going to those extremes in this environment. For for both of you, what is something Mercedes does as an actor's director and a leader on set to create that kind of environment? And also, what is something about the way she works with actors that you're really excited for more actors out there to get to experience on her future films? Um, the, 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 the big thing that stood out to me was just the, the level of, for, for such a tight script and for something that is so purposeful every single word um we were still allowed to just play and explore and there's there's one scene that uh, kind of the i guess the climax of the movie that we spent an entire day on and me and maddie just like didn't talk to each other outside of it but we were just we were given take after take after take after take to just explore every single divot of this scene and and it, and it just it made me very happy you know shooting this intensely emotional thing and then we would wrap up and 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 look over mercedes just be like do we want to do seven more let's do seven more <laughs> like just just keep going give me whatever the hell you want to give me and that was just that's the best feeling i think as 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 an actor to just work with somebody who gives you that level of trust it's it's beautiful yeah Thank i you. would <laughs> say trust freedom collaboration and one thing i really liked that you did is you wouldn't come up with like a specific note. You'd just be like, okay, let's do this now. You were like, that was one way. Let's let's try this. Yeah. It wasn't like, okay, but now I think now I think you should do it was like, do you want to try something crazy? Yeah. Well, we got interesting things that I never would have expected. Like there's yeah. this one scene that I remember. It's like we did it all the same ways for like five takes and for the sixth take, I was like, Maddie, try like try making him think that you're like seducing him. Yeah. And it was that. just like different than anything else in the movie. And you just like, you went with it. And it was, it was so just like fun. us trying something and that's what we ended up using. I remember, and you yeah. were like, chug that glass of champagne. Yeah. Or what was it? Was yeah, it, it was champagne? like, chug it, yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was fun. Can you paint a little picture of what your set looked like? Because I was reading the press <laughs> notes and this sounds like a one of a kind type of shooting environment. It was wild. Um, OK, so I'm just going to like try to paint a picture as much as I can. So basically it was a six story abandoned hospital, but it wasn't a hospital. We built our own hospital and it was just this like gutted building. There was a morgue in the basement that we had to walk through every single day to get to set. That was a morgue? It was a morgue. Cool. Now you know. Um, and at the beginning, actually, some of our crew members thought it was haunted. So we had to have a Native American chieftain come before we started shooting to like do like a four hour cleansing ritual to make everyone feel OK. Um, and so then what was also wild is like our whole movies, custom built sets that even like open off into the space because we wanted to be able to like flow through them within our building. We have shots where like the camera drops down three floors because we're like, great, there's like a hole in this building that we could just like drop our camera down. Because that's where they used to drop the bodies all the way down to the morgue. Yeah. It was like, it was yeah, like it's a like, Batman yeah, and Robin like situation down yeah. the pole. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know how morgues work. <laughs> that is something else. Uh, like production wise <laughs> and, and building the sets and I guess some of the bigger set pieces, was there any particular one in the shooting schedule that you kind of circled and said, that's going to be the most ambitious one to pull off? And then was that indeed the case or did something else catch you by surprise? I think everything we did was kind of intense. So I feel like every day we're like, here we go. Um, but I think like the most, one of the most physically taxing things is we like man-made lakes inside of our building. So it's like the whole second floor we like flooded and converted into a lake. And so it was really intense because these guys had to be like running around in it all day long along with our crews. So we all had like boots on and it's like near freezing weather. It's like two degrees above. So you can even see our actors breath sometimes on screen, which we couldn't help because our building's huge, but like it kind of gives it this surreal feeling. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. In a, it sounds to me like you need to have like a, like a lot planned out to a T to a T. It's just so like you have that flexibility to play around on set. But was there ever a day where like things were going so wrong that you thought you weren't going to be able to find a creative solution or recover, but you guys rallied and you figured out a way to make something work? 
Yeah. I mean, I think that's like that's the madness of filmmaking. Right. But I think it's like having people you trust where like when something like that happens, we're like, OK, we can't shoot in the dollhouse right now. We're like, OK, great. Go to the lake. Um, and it's like everyone's so prepared that we just know what we're going to do next. So I feel like that happens so many times. But we are just always so like go that I can't even recall like a specific one. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. All I keep thinking about, and we can't really talk about it, is just that epic one -er you have near the end of the movie. I am just so incredibly impressed by how damn good that looks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, winners are fun, and that one's pretty waggy. <laughs> it, is, it is something yeah. else. I feel like I have to let you go soon. I have a million more questions. We always like squeezing in some like future project questions, and I'm coming your way. It's not something that actually exists, but I will promise you that every time we talk until this happens, I will ask you this question. What? Malignant too. We need it, <laughs> don't we? What is the next chapter of her story that you would like to see? I'm sure James would do it. <laughs> he he loves malignant. I'm sure he'd do it. I don't know. I'm not in charge. You should be in charge. I think so too. Thank you for saying that. I feel like she should harness Gabriel's powers yeah. and be some sort of hero and then you're the sidekick. <sighs> the sidekick? No, that's badass. That's badass to be Robin. Robin's not hot. If you were her, so if you were her what? sidekick, how would okay, you? Okay, <laughs> put like Batman, Robin. Which one do you want to be? Do you know what I mean? I mean, Batman seems real stressed all the time. That's true. You do get like the good end of the stick. Yeah. Batman's got to do most of the work, and you just get to be like hot, and you get to make out with Alicia Silverstone. Or Robin. <laughs> or Robin. Yeah. You know, which would be a I great like I those movies. I love I that one. Care. I don't care who knows it. I love the George Clooney Batman. So good. I it's yeah. So camp. It's so good. I I love that movie. But in Sleepaway Camp, as a tiny child, I had a big gigantic Batman Forever poster hanging above my bed, and I thought I was the coolest and still to this day I think I was the coolest kid there. You were. Val Kilmer were straight up best Batman. I don't, I don't care. He, like, he Ooh, is. Ooh, hot that's, take. That's the hot take. It's not even <laughs> hot. Is? It's a, that is a cold take. Val. <laughs> Val's Batman? Oh my God. I haven't seen it. He's the only one who got it. If you like Batman and Robin, you should also see Batman Forever. See, but I just like movies that are shitty. What do you think this movie? What do you think this movie? What do you think Batman Forever I is? Need to, I need to <laughs> edit know what, that out. <laughs> what, what is what is your favorite movie of all time, or not even favorite movie of all time, but what is the movie that you repeat watch the most? I can't wait to hear this answer. The Holiday. That is such a good romantic comedy. I could watch that <laughs> over and over. I've I'm seen dead it serious. so many times. That's a good movie, too. Weirdly, I've also seen Blackfish a lot. Oh, I can't watch that over and over. No, I know. A lot of people are like, that's so sad, but it's like a comfort watch to me. Sadness is comfort. Am okay. I okay? <laughs> no, like maybe a- Blackfish is a good movie, though. Maybe a comfort watch in it being a good movie, but also it existing, letting you know that people out there are doing something about it or, be, or raising yeah. awareness about it. I just like whales. I like whales too. What's yours? And I like all Batmans. My favorite movie? Yeah. What's I a watched, comfort movie? Um, favorite movie of all time in the movie that I've watched the most yeah. is Jurassic Park. For as both? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, it's either job. Jurassic Park or Scream. But I've, nice. I've seen both an absurd amount of times. I already have a Jurassic Those Park tattoo. Cool I'm getting answers. a Scream tattoo soon. We'll be great. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. Now I'm getting yelled at. I have to let you guys go. I can talk about your movie and Batmans forever. Congratulations. Thank you for coming Thank by. You. Thanks. To everybody out there. Keep an eye out for fixation. We will see you soon with more TIFF 2022 interviews.